This is Taiwan Insider, a weekly news roundup brought to you by Radio Taiwan International. Every week we bring you the biggest and most interesting stories coming out of Taiwan. I am Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan. And here's your week in a minute. Three bills on same-sex marriage remain stalled in the legislature. President Tsai has urged support for the cabinet's version, which she says is the most widely accepted. It is the only one of the bills to use the term marriage. Germany and Australia have become the latest countries to call for Taiwan's inclusion in the World Health Assembly, the WHO's decision-making body. Taiwan has been barred once again from the assembly's annual meeting due to Chinese pressure. The Mainland Affairs Council has granted a two-month visa extension for Hong Kong bookstore owner Lam Wing Kee. Lam is wanted in China for selling books illegally and could face extradition there under a proposed change to Hong Kong law. The Quarantine Bureau is on guard against the fall armyworm, an invasive insect that devastates crops. It's possible the insect could cross the Taiwan Strait from China by natural means, but the Bureau is stepping up inspections to keep humans from bringing in the insect accidentally. The U.S. House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee says the U.S. one-China policy is not the same as that espoused by Beijing. The committee tweeted in response to Beijing's criticism of pro-Taiwan bills. And that's your Week in a Minute. Every week at the top of the show, we each come up with a word of the week that we think describes our stories this week. Andrew, are you ready to do, to guess my word? Yes, I am. All right. Real. Right. Righteous? Rights! <laughs> yes, very close. Very good. Okay, so we're going to be talking, well, the legislature is going to be voting on the rights of same-sex couples and uh, this week on Friday. And whatever bill they choose is going to be a first in Asia. Also, we'll be talking about the health rights of people in Taiwan as the WHA begins next week. And we'll be talking about endangered animals. They have the right to protection. Ooh. Right? That's right? a great way to tie them all <laughs> together. That's very right. All right. Are you ready for my word? Yes. Okay. Let's see here. D for dinosaur? No. <laughs> <laughs> Deaf. Dead. Yes. Deadlock. Dead like. <laughs> dead like. <laughs> no such thing as dead like. <laughs> dead like. Oh. So actually, I was thinking about all three of the stories that we're going to be talking about today as well. So there is a deadline for lawmakers to pass legislation connected That's to right. same-sex marriage. That's right. May 24th is the deadline, but they'll actually be voting on those three bills on Friday. The WHA, there's a deadline for Taiwan to participate in this year's WHA mm -hmm. meeting. It begins on Monday, but I don't think Taiwan is going to be there at the table. And of course, sadly, if we're talking about endangered animals like we will be later Aww. on today, hopefully we can extend their deadline. So those are our topics for today. Plus, do you know where this is? Wow. Isn't that pretty? Well, um, I'll give you a hint. It's the third largest artificial lake in Taiwan. Mm. We'll have the answer for you in our parting shot. But now to our top story. The legislature on Friday is going to vote on three different bills about same-sex marriage. Let's take a look at this report. Advocates of same-sex marriage held a rally outside of the legislature on Tuesday while lawmakers met inside to discuss the bills. But although the goal was to find a consensus, few changes were made ahead of review on Friday. Legislature President Su Jia Quan says there are only a handful of contentious clauses and it's a short bill, so the review shouldn't last until the early hours of the morning. President Tsai Ing-wen says legalizing same-sex marriage is a major challenge, especially with three different bills now on the table. She says the cabinet's proposal can draw the biggest consensus because it incorporates different views. Opposition KMT lawmaker Lai Shibao has accused the government of running roughshod over a referendum on same-sex marriage held last year. 67 percent of those who voted opposed legalizing same-sex marriage. Lawmakers are on a tight deadline to pass legislation by May 24. That's because the high court ruled in 2017 that it is unconstitutional to not include same-sex couples in the definition of marriage. They gave lawmakers two years to amend the law. If lawmakers fail to pass legislation by the deadline next week, then same-sex couples in Taiwan will be allowed to register under the current marriage laws. 
Now, what's confusing is that the legislature is now considering three draft bills which are connected to same-sex marriage. But what's tricky is that they don't all pave the way for same-sex marriage. So what are these three bills and what do they contain? That's the subject of today's Taiwan Explained. In today's Taiwan Explained, I'm going to walk you through the three draft bills that the legislature is set to vote on on Friday. They're all connected to same-sex marriage, but they differ in terms of how they deal with marriage, what the benefits are, what the restrictions are, and who proposed them. Okay, we have 60 seconds on the clock. Are you ready, Andrew? Oof, big topic. I don't know. I got a buzzer, too. I'll do my best. All right, go. All right. We begin with the cabinet version, which is the best option for same-sex couples in Taiwan. It's the only true marriage option, and the partners are referred to as spouses. Now, the minimum age is 18, which is the current minimum age for men to get married in Taiwan. It's 16 for women, but that's another story. Now, transnational couples cannot get married if the foreigner comes from a country where it's not legal. Now, this is the case for all three bills. Uh, this is the only bill that allows adoption, but only when the child is biologically related to one of the partners. Now, the main opposition, uh, KMT's version, is not a marriage bill. It's a response to a referendum last year in which 67% of voters opposed same-sex marriage. It refers to a familial relationship in which the partners are family members. The minimum age is higher, it's 20, and no adoption, just joint guardianship. And the final version is the erroneously called consensus bill by the DPP's Lin Daihua. Actually, it's a civil union bill in which the partners are domestic partners. Hey, time is up! <laughs> <laughs> you can finish your sentence. Okay, well, I was going to say the rest of this final bill is actually very similar to the KMT's version. The only way it differs is that it's a same-sex partnership, a domestic partnership. I do have two other points. Can I make them? Go ahead. <laughs> You're gonna I'm not going to stop you. Slip those in. Okay. So there are two things that I want to say about this final bill. They, it did originally have a very unusual clause, which they have since stricken from this draft bill, which would have allowed family members to annul the marriage of a same-sex couple. Well, that's pretty intense. That is very intense. Very controversial. Very controversial, yeah. And the other thing is, is it does contain protections for free speech and religious protections for those who oppose same-sex marriage. And those are still part of that draft bill. So, Andrew, any idea on which will prevail? Well, it's hard to say, but the DPP does have a majority in the legislature. So it's likely that the cabinet version has the upper hand. However, there are a lot of DPP lawmakers that are from conservative areas in Taiwan in next year's an election year. So uh -huh. the heat is on. It's hard to say. So we will be following the story, definitely. Yes, absolutely. And that is our Taiwan Explain for this week. Now on to another story that we've been following, the World Health Assembly, the WHA. It begins next Monday, and participants will include health leaders from all around the world except Taiwan. Now for eight years, from 2009 to 2016, Taiwan participated as an observer in the World Health Assembly, or WHA, which is the governing body of the WHO. However, in 2017, China opposed Taiwan's participation as an observer, saying that it oversees the needs, the health needs of the Taiwan people. Now many countries, including the US, the EU, Australia, and Japan, have voiced their support for Taiwan this year. And this week, medical groups in Taiwan held a press conference to speak out for Taiwan. Let's take a look at that report. Taiwan should be allowed to join the WHA. That was the call on Monday from 20 local medical groups, including the Taiwan Medical Association. They're pushing for Taiwan's participation in the World Health Assembly. Taiwan Medical Association President Dr. Chiu Taiyuan says Taiwan is unable to participate in the WHA due to political pressure, something he says is regrettable and has angered his group. Many countries have stepped forward to support Taiwan's bid to join the WHA this year. Taiwanese groups in Toronto held a parade on Saturday to thank Canadian politicians like MP John McKay. Taiwan should take uh, full status at the uh, United Nations with respect to the uh, health. Meanwhile, at an event in Manila, former Philippines Health Secretary Enrique Ona also offered his support. Effort 
to isolate Taiwan is more on politics rather than on health. Hope that uh, WHO would hopefully change their mind. The chances of Taiwan participating in this year's WHA are slim, but local doctors are still hoping to share their expertise with the rest of the world. So why is it important for Taiwan to participate in the WHA and in the WHO? Well, I'd like to turn your attention to this article in The Telegraph. Now, this is uh, by a Taiwan-based correspondent, Nicholas Smith, and it contains some very compelling reasons why Taiwan should be involved. Now, uh, we have pulled together some of these reasons and we've distilled them into some talking points that you can use to uh, push the case as well. So first, let's have a look at this. Taiwan is vulnerable to a pandemic like SARS. So without a connection to the WHO, Taiwan is vulnerable uh, to something like SARS. There are 23 million people in Taiwan. And just to give you an example about how Taiwan is connected to the rest of the world, there were 46 and a half million passengers who traveled through uh, Taiwan's largest international airport last year. Now, SARS, 2003, this is a pandemic that began in China. Uh, when it got to Taiwan, 150,000 people were quarantined and 37 people actually succumbed to the disease. Now, Taiwan's foreign minister, Joseph Wu, says that if Taiwan had early assistance from the WHO, perhaps that situation wouldn't have been as bad. Another reason is that if Taiwan does attend the regular WHA annual meeting, it doesn't mean it has full access to the WHO. We only were able to attend 49 out of 165 techn technical meetings that we asked to attend. So that means we are out of the loop That's in terms right. of you know the latest information and we aren't able to contribute as well our expertise. And another way that Taiwan has been able to un, uh, contribute in the uh, WHO and the WHA is monetarily. Now, last year, uh, Taipei uh, tried to give a million US dollars to help fight Ebola. However, it was rejected because Taiwan is not a member of the WHO. So what is Taiwan doing to spread the word about the WHA? Well, let's take a look in our next segment, hashtag Taiwan, at a lighthearted attempt to deal with this serious issue. In today's Hashtag Taiwan, we're going to discuss whether it is possible to tackle a serious and heavy issue with a lighthearted way. And to do that, we're going to be taking a look at some recent posts by MOFA, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, on Facebook. So let's start off with this post. It's a bunch of animals saying, we support Taiwan's participation in the WHA. Those are all countries that have publicly voiced support for Taiwan's participation in uh, the upcoming meeting, which begins this Monday. Now, Nally, what do you think of this post? Um, well, my first reaction is it's very cute, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily uh, strike the right tone for this more serious issue. Anything surprise you about uh, what you see in the, the I mean, obviously there's some- Is this a ghost or, or, or an <laughs> octopus? What is it, a pink? No, it's an octopus. Yes, well, you can see like there's an eagle for the US. We know right. what that is, that's easy to guess. Um, kangaroo for Australia. A fox? Our I dog. That's probably a corgi from the UK. <laughs> okay. But the question is, Germany, what's going on there? Let's have a look at some of the uh, responses to that in a thread on Twitter. So one person said, Germany has a mutant baby octopus with four legs. Another person said, as a German, I feel this <laughs> is accurate. <laughs> so Natalie, do you know why they chose an octopus? No, I don't. Well, it's because of this fella. This is Paul the Octopus. If you remember back to the uh, World Cup, I believe it was 2010, there was an octopus at an aquarium in Germany who was accurately predicting the results of football matches. In fact, uh, in his heyday, Paul got 12 out of 14 matches. He guessed them correctly by eating out of the correct feed bowl. Oh, that's more than a human would do, right? <laughs> Very good for him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Let's have a look at some of the other Facebook posts. So you see they also have some um, games that they have here. You have to connect the correct mascot with the correct country. So you can see the Formosan black bear there. And you, I don't know what all these other animals are. Uh, an alpaca maybe for, is that Peru? <laughs> 
So, I mean, essentially, it's it's a fun way to kind of look at a more serious issue. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so not everyone was impressed with the cute design. Actually, these were all responses to a thread, the earlier tweets, um, started by Tricky Type A or Kathy Chang. And let's take a look at what she said. She says, I'm speechless at every person defending this as cute or creative. We're not hoping to score a job at Disneyland. This was the last opportunity for this administration to make an impact at the WHA before the election. And once again, the digital campaign wasn't there. So what do you think, Andrew? Well, you know, I think she has actually a pretty good point. Although uh, my question is, is who is this geared towards? Is this geared towards the overseas community, the international community? Or is this actually geared towards people here in Taiwan? If you go back to the original Facebook post, a lot of the responses were very supportive. People said it was very cute. They liked the design. People in Taiwan or people overseas? I think the people in Taiwan were saying that. So maybe it's more of a way of showing people here in Taiwan that the overseas community uh -huh. is supporting Taiwan. I can see her point. I mean, it seems a little bit too lighthearted for serious medical issues. Absolutely. But I think that MoFo, they also had a lot of different tweets. They had a lot of serious tweets. And That's they had true. tweets with the logo of the WHO and thanking all the different countries. So it wasn't their only tweet. That's or true. Or their only, you know, image. So um, anyways, a lot of different discussion about those interesting tweets this time. Absolutely. And that's this week's Hashtag Taiwan. Be sure to connect with us on social media and leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Each week, we introduce a facet of Taiwan via a number. Now, Andrew, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. And you guess the number. All right. Can you guess the number of endangered land mammals in Taiwan? <laughs> <laughs> you studied this, haven't you? <laughs> you know, it's a number I have right off the top of my head. The number of endangered land mammals, mammals. in Taiwan. In Taiwan. <laughs> Take a wild guess. 20? Okay. Well, um, we'll find out <laughs> how close or not you are. <laughs> um, after we take a look at this report about a Formosan black bear. On the morning of April 30th, a Black Hawk helicopter took off, headed to eastern Taiwan on an important mission. This was an unusual assignment. The helicopter was airlifting a young Formosan black bear. The bear cub was seriously ill when it was discovered last summer, apparently abandoned by its mother. At the time, it was only three or four months old and weighed just five kilograms. The Taiwan Black Bear Conservation Association took the cub in. After nine months of care, the bear now stands at 120 centimeters and weighs in at 43 kilograms. The cub completed a training program equipping it to survive in the wild, and the time came for the bear to return to its forested home. The airlift was a success. A team will now spend the next year monitoring the bear's movements through a satellite tracker attached temporarily to its neck. Meanwhile, a local team will patrol the area to ensure the cub and other black bears can grow up undisturbed. Oh, Nally, isn't that the most adorable thing you've seen all day? Isn't it great news? It's beautiful. Just Looking at the, the bear kind of tentatively stepping out of he the looks cage, like he's looking around. going back home, right, yeah. into his own world. And so we're going to be talking about some of our endangered animals, which you know nothing about. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <No. laughs> so um, I asked you how many land mammals are endangered. Let's take a look at the number. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel much better about five than I do about 20. Okay, so I'm yeah. going to see um, if you can guess the names of these Five. I'm going to introduce okay. them to you. All right. I mean, there's a lot of animals and species, but we're going to focus on land mammals this time. All right. Okay. So I'm going yes. to show you a picture and you try to guess what it is. All right. All right. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. So the first one, let's take a look. Oh, I know this one. This is a <laughs> Formosan so cute? black bear and it has the little V on it. They wear V-necks. That's how you can tell them. That's right. And you know, they are the largest land animal in Taiwan mm -hmm. and the only endemic bear. We see them all the time as mascots, right? Mm -hmm. O bear, Bravo the bear, but they're actually hard to spot in real life because they avoid humans. Yes, so I would too. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty scary. So they're probably not likely to attack us unless we provoke them. Yeah, okay, okay? good. Good so to know. So let's take a look at another one. All right. 
Ooh, Isn't that beautiful? That looks kind of like a leopard. Um, I'm going to guess that's the clouded leopard. That's right. Very good. Uh, the Formosan there, clouded leopard. Are there still clouded leopards? So that's a good question because in 2013, they were officially um, deemed extinct because they searched for them for 13 years and didn't find a trace. Wow. But last year, two Paiwan villagers said they spotted one. Wow, 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 wow. So there is hope they're still alive. And what's interesting is that only Aborigines have spotted them, mm -hmm. except for there's one account in 1900 that a Japanese anthropologist spotted one. So, so indigenous people largely live in more rural or yeah, remote areas. Yeah, they get to see the beautiful the animals. Yeah. So we hope they're still alive. Okay. Let's take a look at another one. All right. Well, that kind of looks like the same leopard, isn't it? Just a baby version? No. <laughs> is it a, is it a uh, one of those, um, oh, sometimes they cross highways, the, the cats. That's right. Civet cats? No. Put those two words together. Uh, highway cat? <laughs> leopard cat. Oh, leopard. That's right. You're right. You're very right about they cross highways, actually. That's one of the reasons that they're um, endangered, because yeah. they get killed a lot on the road. There's uh, estimated about 500 left. Mm. Um, they're about the size of a domestic cat and they sound like a domestic cat, but like bigger cats, they hunt. Mm -hmm. um, they're carnivorous and they don't play with their food. Like <laughs> they like, grab their food until it's, it's, it's dead. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're a little bit more ferocious Meow. than domestic cats. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this animal. Okay. Can oh. you guess what that is? Oh, that looks like a bat. You're right. Its name is the Formosa flying fox. I don't think you'd guess that. Right? No. no. So <laughs> Thank it's, you. <laughs> it's the largest species of bat. And what's interesting is that Taiwan actually has 40 species of bats. 40 That's species? That's right. One of the of densest bats. in the world. So we've been called the kingdom of the bats. Really? Yeah. We have a lot of bats. And actually, they're very good for the environment because they um, feed on flying insects like mm -hmm. mosquitoes and pests. So farmers love them. I would like to have one in my apartment. I wouldn't mind having one either. Getting that mosquito <laughs> that comes and bothers me in the middle of the night every night. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at one more. Okay. Oh, wow. Is that a seal? That's it an otter. Like an otter. That's wow. That's right. So Eurasian otters, actually, mm -hmm. um, they're only available, they only have communities in Jingmen. Now this one was caught as a abandoned pup in mm. Jingmen and taken to the Taipei Zoo where it adjusted well a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, they're nearly extinct throughout wow. Asian coasts, but there are some in Jingmen. You know, it's amazing. You know, we think of Taiwan as being such a small island, but it has such a richness of biodiversity. It's incredible. You would never think that there would be bears and and otters and all yeah, kinds of amazing so animals. Yeah, so many animals. These are just the land mammals. We have mm. a lot of great, um, you know, kind of species that we are protecting, but yeah. those are some of them. All right. So, and now let's take a look at our parting shot again. Let's take a look at that photo. Isn't that beautiful? Mm, it is beautiful. So, I don't know if you guessed what that is. Let's take a look at this video. See, it's the Shimon Reservoir. Ah, okay. Yes. It provides water supply for more than 3 million people in Taoyuan. Xinzu and New Taipei. It's also used for hydroelectricity, irrigation, and it produces about 80,000 kilograms of fish every year. Wow. It's beautiful scenery and fresh fish make it a great tourist destination. Plum rains in early May of this year added 31 million tons to the reservoir. The water there is now at 80% of capacity, which means there will be plenty of water for us to use up through June. That's good news. Very good news indeed. Yeah, it's a beautiful place to visit. Um, you can have a lot of fresh fish over there, mm -hmm. and it's doing its job too, providing water for us. So thanks to the Sherman Reservoir. Yes. But uh, thank you today for joining us for Taiwan Insider. We hope that you enjoyed our show today, and we hope that you'll leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And also be sure to connect with us on social media. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Andrew Ryan. I'm Natalie So. See you next week. Bye-bye.